If you don't do what mommy tells you, you'll go to hell. That doesn't sound like a threat you'd hear these days, but in the past, you might be threatened with hell for many types of transgressions, not all of them serious. It's some threat too, as it was basically telling a kid if they don't follow certain rules, they were going to spend an eternity being tortured. There's a thread about this threat on Debate.org asking if saying something like that is abusive, and it seems many people had parents that would say such a thing. Most people said it was a horrible thing to tell a child, while others said it was only motivational for kids. But what exactly is hell anyway? That's what we'll find out today in this episode of The Infographic Show. What is hell really supposed to be? If you've seen our show on Satan, you'll know that many religions have, depending on the interpretation, some kind of dark force working within them. You could call this a devil, but the Satan we talked about in that show was something that came from the Old and New Testament. In Islam, you have the fallen angel Iblis. In the Quran, you have something called Jahannam, a kind of hell. And there are lots of names for this place, such as the abyss, the fire, and the blaze. Many Muslim scholars of the Quran said there are seven levels of hell. One student of Islam tells us Muslims believe on the Day of Judgment, people will be held to account. We are told there are angels in hell, and they are severe and harsh and do not not disobey Allah when he commands. The student also said that some people can get out of hell, while others will spend an eternity down there. In Dante's Inferno, the Christian hell has nine levels or circles, but we'll talk about this story later. The Buddhist religion has a kind of hell, and that's called Naraka. Again, there are different levels or circles, with some of them freezing cold and some of them boiling hot. Some temples in Burma or Thailand will have pictures or models of such a place, which look like they were created by a sadist. But not all Buddhists believe in this place, and some might say hell is the life you are living with all its impossible charms and your insatiable needs. In Buddhism, it's more folkloric, mythical, and not part of what might be called Buddhist philosophy. Also, Naraka comes from Hinduism. It's said that this place offers something of a break as eternity might be replaced with just thousands or millions of years of being tortured and tormented. Again, many Hindus differ in their belief about this. Anyway, there are lots of different kinds of hells, which belong to different religions. Today, let's focus on the Christian concept of hell. First, where does it come from? What we mean is, when is it first mentioned? Well, you can trace versions of hell back to Egyptian and Greek mythology and many other ancient mythologies. These stories of a deathly place down below can't be discounted when we think about where the Christian version of hell came from. You see, the Greeks had a place called Hades, a place of the dead. The Hebrew scriptures have a place of the dead too, but that's called Sheol. Scholars tell us that these places were not places of endless torment ruled over by a red-skinned guy with horns. They were, however, as you could expect, not a holiday camp. They were dark and gloomy, and not very nice. There's also the word Tartarus, a Greek word that means a place down below where the dead are tormented. You could find this word in ancient Jewish texts and also the New Testament. In an English Standard Version of the Bible, there's a part that says, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into to hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. Hell here is translated from Tartarus. Some writers, though, say this was a place where humans might go too, and not just angels, and in Greek myth, titans. Others say that Gehenna, another Greek word, was where wicked humans spent time screaming in hellish agony. It's also described as a refuse dump in the Bible. Today, it's a tourist attraction in Israel. Yet others say the concept of hell came from Norse mythology or Germanic mythology and was passed on when those mythologies were replaced by Christianity. Okay, so what we know is that from ancient times there were places where people went after they died, and sometimes there were probably solemn places. There were mentions in old Christian texts and lots of mentions in ancient mythologies, but nowhere in the Bible is there a mention of a modern hell. Many writers agree that there was no explicit mention of this word hell in the Old or New Testament, but the King James versions do have the word hell in them. You can see it in English in those versions 54 times, but it's just translated from these three words we just talked about, Hades, Tartarus, and Gehenna. And some scholars don't think these places are anything like the hell we've been told about in modern times. Some Christians might disagree, but devout Christians disagree with other devout Christians about this, not just some people who don't study the Bible, or suddenly became devout at their wedding or when all hell breaks loose in their lives. In fact, Pope John Paul II said to his audience in 1999, images of hell that sacred scripture presents to us must be correctly interpreted. They show the complete frustration and emptiness of life without God. Rather than a place, hell indicates 
the state of those who freely and definitively separate themselves from God, the source of all life and joy. Moving on, we might blame the 14th century writer Dante Alighieri for our modern horror-laden versions of hell. He wrote the epic poem Divine Comedy, which had a part called Inferno. In that, he describes the circles of hell. Some scholars think he got most of this from the Germanic, Greek, and Norse myths we've talked about, and his description of hell was not taken from the Bible. Nonetheless, it stuck. He wrote the lines, Abandon all hope ye who enter here. And he wasn't kidding, because his hell doesn't sound like a place you'd want to spend three minutes in, never mind an eternity. He talks about eternal pain, people who walked backwards because their faces were twisted around, mad brutishness, and infinite howling. He describes people being constantly chased by wasps and hornets, and maggots and worms feeding on the tears, blood, and pus of the sinners. And that part is just the vestibule, aka Hell's Lobby. Then you have the circles where certain sinners go, such as violent folks or suicides. Suicides, for instance, are turned into ugly trees and are feasted on for eternity by hungry birds. It doesn't get much better in any circle. Even astrologers are blinded by their own tears and have their heads twisted around and other body parts contorted. If you're lucky, you might just have your throat bitten into by a wild beast and then burst into flames. Keep in mind, it's eternity, so expect reruns ad infinitum. Lucifer is down there in the center of hell, described like this. He had three faces, one in front, blood red, and then another two that just above the midpoint of each shoulder joined the first, and at the crown, all three were reattached. The inferno certainly didn't sound like a picnic, and made Hades look like Disneyland on a rainy day. Anyone in their right mind would beg for a trip to Gehenna after reading that poem. As you can imagine, this was a strong force later in getting people on track to believe anything the church told them to do. Hell was visualized, and it was a nightmarish phantasmagoria for believers. All that pain for an astrologer just because they told someone they have a Capricorn sun with Venus and Aquarius in the fifth house. But Dante was also hard on the church. He condemned religious corruption and the sale of indulgences, and popes ended up in this horrific hell too. Dante appealed to us to be better people, but reasonable too. His version of hell, however fantastic, can't be ignored when we consider some of the things we've been told about hell and what horrors await us down there. We might these days watch scary movies that depict similar hells, places where demons rage and rip naughty humans into pieces, where smoke bellows from every patch of shorn blackened land, and where agonizing screams can be heard everywhere and forevermore. Before movies, it was Dante that partly inspired horror literature. His ghouls and monsters looking creatures were skulking about, always thirsty for blood and wanton to inflict pain. It was a good enough reason to scare the hell out of children or religious skeptics. This terrible depiction worked. However, it wasn't really part of the Christian discourse. It was more a work of fiction taken from some older tales. So while there was a fair bit of burning going on in the Bible and some lost souls, you can't compare them to something like the biblical lake of fire and the utterly frightening specter of what went down in Dante's Inferno. Okay, so Augustine might have said, hell, which also is called a lake of fire and brimstone, will be material fire and will torment the bodies of the damned. But that's a long way from Dante's never-ending trip into the god-awful abyss. As one Christian scholar writes, the New Testament does not describe the torment of Gehenna or portray Satan as the lord of Gehenna. There are later literary accoutrements. Accoutrements, in this case, means bits added on. In conclusion, hell, as this fiery place where we suffer forever, was made up much later than the old religious texts. It suited some religious people to preach about such a place, but many serious Christian scholars just disagree. We also know that many people will also disagree with this, and many others will have their own idea of what hell is. What are your thoughts about hell? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Why Are We Afraid of Friday the 13th? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.